Oh my goodness. In, in one instance, you kind of feel bad for the white guy highlighting his very proud Biden sign to the angry mob that just doesn't give a damn. And in another, it's kind of poetic. Welcome back, beautiful and amazing human beings. This is Okudowski of WeAreChange.org. Lots of amazing, incredible propaganda disinformation to break down in this video. As, of course, we're going to be talking about all the latest news developing right now surrounding the election. And there's a lot of lunacy out there. The biggest, I would say, is people having a naive belief that a career elected politician is actually, quote, looking out for their best interest. I mean, oh man, I mean, these jokes literally write themselves. It's hilarious. Some celebrations definitely got out of hand as a man was shot dead in Seattle. Other people celebrated by proudly virtue signaling their pronouns in their Twitter bios, which was uh, essentially a big deal for a lot of people as Kamala Harris announced that she is she, her. Wow, uh, thanks for that handy guide there. I, <laughs> I would have been totally lost. I, I... I would have been totally lost if we didn't have that. Comedian Tim Dillon, I think, had the perfect response to it by saying, quote, my excuse, specifically talking about not having his pronouns in his Twitter bio, is that, quote, I don't feel guilty for putting a bunch of people in jail, so I don't capitulate to online mobs who demand I make meaningless gestures. Thank you for asking. And he is absolutely right. Now, before we continue on with our regularly scheduled program, I wanted to remind everyone that the biggest and one of the most important things you could do is actually physically doing something. You vote every single day with your dollar, with your decisions, with your thoughts, with your values and actions, and that is far more important than just voting. Yes, voting is quick, it's easy, it's free, it absolves you of any responsibility, but does it fix the problem? Absolutely not. It's going to take hard work, dedication, and you as an individual taking responsibility for yourself in order to solve the problems. So yeah, as an independent media organization, I think it's important for people to understand this, especially now more than ever. And I think because we talk about these important issues, it's one of the reasons why we are fully demonetized and literally rely on your support to keep us up and running. There's many very easy, convenient ways to support us on wearechange.org forward slash donate. The link is down in the description below. And whether it is Venmo, the Cash App, Monero, Bitcoin, one-time donations, $5 a month donations, or even ways to support us without spending a single dime. Yes, we have a whole entire section dedicated to literally just using free services that are awesome and great, like Brave, Presearch, Steam It, and Hive, which literally rewards you and us just by simply using it. So yeah, check out those platforms. And by any chance, if you are shirtless, check out our new t-shirt, which just launched a few moments ago, which of course you could only get through our official Teespring store, which is linked directly down below. Now, I think it's pretty easy to say that things have definitely been interesting since our quote last election with, of course, a very defiant U.S. President Donald Trump. He has definitely been tweeting up a storm. A lot of his tweets have been censored on social media, while, of course, the mainstream media announced that Joe Biden has won the election and they are attacking Donald Trump for his defiance of that news. A lot of people who post support of U.S. President Donald Trump regarding this issue are also effectively censored and banned by social media. And uh, I have to say th that is pretty interesting since four years ago, literally. Four years ago, we had non-stop 24-7 coverage of how the election was rigged. There was Russian collusion. The elections were fraud. If you didn't believe that was the case, you were attacked by the mainstream media and censored in some instances by the big tech monopolies. And now, if you believe what they were trying to tell you, well, now the mainstream media attacks you for it, and of course, social media tech censors you. That's a fairly big flip-flop by the establishment on this issue that deserves to be called out. But rather than have any humility, rather than show any positive characteristics, the mainstream media is literally patting itself on the back because they, quote, saved democracy. Yep, the same media obsessing about 
Russia Gate, telling you how our elections were flawed, are now telling you they are extremely accurate and there definitely wasn't any wrongdoing. This is the same media telling you the election's over, there's nothing else to think about, there's nothing to question, there's nothing to look at. Go back to sleep, America. Your attention is no longer required. And just on that merit alone, this gives you enough reason to be, of course, skeptical. And you have every reason to be skeptical because this is the same government that runs the DMV, that runs the post office, and literally sent 1.4 million dead people stimulus checks just weeks ago. Now, there are some questions that are arising, specifically surrounding the mail-in ballots, that according to some defy logic. Some precincts reported 100% or more voter turnout, which of course is improbable. When a similar event unfolded like this in Iran, the U.S. mainstream media was all over it, calling it a fraud. But now they're very oddly silent about these issues. According also to Rudy Giuliani, the lawyer of U.S. President Donald Trump, he allegedly has, quote, according to him, enough evidence to reverse Pennsylvania and Michigan, a electoral decision to turn to the favor of U.S. President Donald Trump. There are some anomalies to this election that do deserve to be investigated, and I really hope we have the patience to go through some of these accusations, look at the data, look at the facts, look at the evidence, and then make up our mind after that. Now, regardless of all of that, many still now see Joe Biden as the next president. He is moving forward with many declarations, many promises, with a major checklist for changes for his, quote, government. Now, a lot of people, especially through the controlled social media algorithms, are predominantly talking about the social kind of changes that Biden is talking about. You know, pronouns, bullying, issues that are absolutely irrelevant when you compare them to America's foreign policy, which seems to be something that no one wants to talk about at all. And that's why we're going to be talking about it in this video. And you really don't need to speculate to understand where Joe Biden stands, as of course executives from the military industrial complex are reassuring their stockholders that they know Joe Biden really well and that they're unconcerned with his presidency. Now, of course, other executives made similar statements about the outcome of the election that regardless, they would be happy. And uh, that is true, as of course, many people expect Joe Biden to continue America's foreign policy doctrine, just like he did under Obama's administration, that was extremely hawkish and neoconservative in its foreign policy. And now Yemen is going to get democratically led bombs dropped on them rather of course than republican ones now donald trump definitely has a mixed record especially with his foreign policy i have criticized it heavily on this channel but it is worth noting that he has been the first president in a very long time not to start a new war obama and biden under their presidency launched many different wars and i i think it's not out of the realm of speculation to believe that there will be more of an aggressive foreign policy under the biden administration as of course this is an issue that the left predominantly forgets about doesn't want to talk about censors and is completely off limits as soon as a democrat sits behind the Oval Office. Again, the military industrial complex, clear winners here. When we look at Joe Biden and his career as a longtime politician, he has always served special interests extremely well. If you look at his policies, as well as Kamala Harris's actions when she was prosecutor in California, you see a lot of horrible, reckless actions that have left people suffering that have caused human pain on insurmountable levels whether it's the marijuana convictions or convictions of people who kamala harris knew were innocent or the 1994 crime bill these people have a lot to reckon with with their souls cruelty is definitely one way of describing it in my opinion and if you think the nation is going to be healed by this or that somehow everything will be better from now on you are absolutely fooling yourselves and this is why i specifically 
specifically wanted to point out to foreign policy since there are many foreign ministers in the Middle East right now that are worried about the potential of war in the region with the Biden presidency. Now, will there be an Iranian peace deal? Will there be an overthrow of Libya? Will radical Islamists be funded again? Will there be more regime change in the Middle East? Well, we are going to see, but that's definitely one thing to look out for. Again, when we look at the policies of Joe Biden, we see a lot of policies that have absolutely hurt more people than they have helped. And if you think I'm wrong, let me know why in the comment section below. But when I see this man very actively and eagerly prepare his to-do list and checklist for everyone, I'm uh, absolutely not excited. Now still, even though he has a horrendous track record, I think it's important to look at all of these policies that he is proposing and promising to push through when he becomes president with an open mind, just like anything. But again, don't expect things to be different from what the man has already been doing for a very long time. And when we look at his list, already the first thing is rejoining the World Health Organization. By the way, with his presidency, Taiwan is absolutely screwed. A federal mask mandate, yes, because more government officials putting people in jail or giving them summonses is really going to help the situation. The third thing, calling up nato see again i told you building up the military industrial complex and more military alliances for potential more conflict rejoining the paris climate accord because yes taxing people will of course change the weather another thing is transgender students rights the question is when didn't they have rights of course, he is also a fan of immigration, so he will try to make DACA permanent and end the Muslim ban. And already we are seeing very establishment proposals that once again will only benefit the special billionaire class. Again, these are just my opinions, but when we look at the history of such actions, you see a history of a very small group of people benefiting from them while it leaves everyone else holding the bag. It's going to be very difficult to take his conholio sickness strategy very seriously as many of his supporters literally are tweeting out how horrible it is for people to mass gather when it's regarding an event they don't like. Meanwhile, they were celebrating in mass huge numbers his alleged victory. Again, Biden is still coming out saying that despite the positive news regarding the Conholio sickness, the United States is still facing a very dark winter, all as his supporters with the mayor of New York City are celebrating in the streets, hugging each other, dancing and singing, having fun. Since their gathering is by the establishment, it is allowed. Other people in the same time who are trying to run their businesses are literally ruined by big government bureaucrats going to their businesses, shutting them down, extorting them, fining them, and stealing their livelihood away right in front of their eyes. And as the celebrations go on, they're absolutely filled with utter hypocrisy and a dangerous levels of ignorance that along with their hubris will be very dangerous for everyone. So yeah, that's happening. So yeah, you know, if you thought this video was uh, helpful, eye-opening, refreshing, if, if, you woke, if it woke you up a little bit to the realities of this world, please share it with your friends and family members. It is more important than ever. Without you guys doing that, I wouldn't be here. Literally, you grabbing a little mouse, clicking right now, the URL button, sending it to someone else makes the biggest difference. And if it wasn't for you doing that, I wouldn't be here. And this is why I love you guys. Stay tuned for more here on wearechange.org.